thing they did was put her in whatever the fuck this is. Hello again, and welcome back to another video. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I am both a lover of fantasy books and fantasy shows. So we're gonna do something that kind of combines those interests. And I'm going to be ranking the costumes from Shadow and Bone season two on Netflix. I read the books before the show came out. I have, I don't think you can see it on my bookshelf, but I have all of them and I've read all of them, and I love all of them deeply, despite the fact that some of them are bad. But I love them, and I won't tell you which ones I think are bad, because you're gonna hate me. But I do like costumes. So we're gonna be going through not all of the costumes of Shadow Moon season two, but some of them, the most notable, and we're gonna be putting them in a fun little tier list. For my tier list, I have made five categories with horribly come up with puns, slash creative titles that I don't think are good, but we're gonna go with it anyway. So for the top tier, as, as the S tier, we have Saints, because I couldn't think of anything better, which is for the best of the best. Very few things will end up here, because I'm picky. For the second tier, we have Adequately Amplified, which are costumes that are really good, but not exceptional. And then we have Better Than the Barrel, which they're average, not horrible, not great. So, better than the barrel, but not by much. And then the crows could do better, which is, um, I think is funny because Kaz makes them dress up in Crooked Kingdom. I don't think it makes much sense, but we're gonna go with it because that's the only C pun I could come up with. And then finally we have Juskel take me because that'd be better than looking at this costume anymore. So, I think that is all the setup we need. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe down below. I also have one making of video of a Lena costume that has yet to be finished. Um, it's over there. We're not gonna talk about it. But without further ado, let's get ranking. We're gonna just do two kind of general categories, one for the keftas and one for the military uniforms. Since there are so many keftas in the show, I'm not really gonna go through and be like, I like this kefta, but not this one, because I think they're all very similar, and I think they all achieve the effect that they're going for. So here's my general overview. I love what they did here. I think they've been elevated from season one, where they were already great, into this really richer look, especially for the ones in the Darklings army. I think it really reflects that they've abandoned the idea that they're anyway like the peasants um, in the book their undergarments and their silhouettes are very like peasanty and kind of like trying to keep themselves humble. They also mention it a little bit in the show with Alina when she's having dinner and she's like, and one of her friends says something about he has us eat peasant food to keep us humble. Similar concept, but they've abandoned that idea and have gone for full luxury. This like velvety silk texture is gorgeous and they kind of have like almost a color shift effect in more unique colors as opposed to just like the primary colors, uh, not primary colors because purple, but you know, the like very solid basic colors that we've seen before, especially the Tidemaker Kefta. I think it's so cool. I love it. The embroidery also looks shinier. I don't know. They might have just been using Smoother Pearl, which is the type of metal. Um, that's shinier versus rough pearl, which is dull. In season one, they use both, but I kind of feel like, I haven't fully investigated this, but I kind of feel like they use more of the smooth, shinier version. And the colors in it are more varied. The Tidemaker Kefta from this new character, whose name I don't know, um, you can see that she has a lot of greens in there and I loved it. Excellent. Overall, loved it. Great. S tier. For the next general category is the army uniforms. I don't have much to say about these. I think they're fine. I think they're unremarkable. They're very classic and I understand why they'd want to go for something like that, but that just kind of makes them a little boring to me. And since so many of the characters are wearing these for so long, I just wish they were doing something with a little more oomph to them, if you know what I mean. Sorry. These fall into just the trap of B tier, since I really don't know what else to do with them. For the first character category, we're going to start with the crows. Kazumi and Nej don't seem to have any outfit changes from season one, which is fine. They're not even on here. 
Uh, Kaz's outfit, it works. It's great. He's not going to be changing his clothes. And Neja's outfit, I really like, and I like that they kept it the same, but in one of the scenes, spoilers, this will be spoil- some of this will have spoilers. Sorry, I didn't specify that previously, but there will be spoilers in this video because I can't keep my mouth shut. And Neja is, when she's fighting the taxidermist, she gets her arms cut through the fabric of her shirt, and then later, it's just brand new again and not repaired. I wish they had done some little stitch work on there. That's my main comment about Inez's costumes. But Ty is a shirtless for most of it, so he gets skipped. Wylan is the new crow to the set, and I think they did a great job of capturing his vibe from the book. I really like the pattern of the shirt that he's wearing under his vest and jacket. It points to a certain something, and it has a certain vibe to it. If you've read the books, you know what I'm talking about. And I think it's really, I think it's a great choice for his background. I think it's wonderful. And the jacket and the vest just kind of make a lot of sense for who he's become as not as much as his background. And he's kind of covering up the shirt with these more utilitarian, useful outfits. Oh, I love it. All of his tools stored in his vest when he does the little reveal, excellent, so cute, I love it. I think great choices were made for this one. I don't think it's exceptional. There's nothing in it that really wows me, even though I do love it. So it's gonna get an A from me. Jasper has a lot of new looks and a lot of them include plaid. I really love this choice for him. I think that including this extra pattern and texture really kind of shows that he values fashion in hats and <laughs> sets him apart from the other crows like Kaz and Inej who don't really put their value into that. Wylan as well. Wylan only has one outfit the whole time and they are all more utilitarian in their style as opposed to um, Jesper who he has fun with it and I love that for him. They also did vast improvements on his hair this season. I, for the finale and like the final big section, I adore this kilt that they have him in. I think it's such a fun choice for his character and like his movement style. I think it gives her a really nice flair. Excellent. Love it. This one also is going to get an A for me. It's not, it's not quite it doesn't have the je ne sais quoi. Nina also has a ton of new outfits now that she's not wandering around the frozen field in wilderness and a lot of plaids as well. I really think that was an interesting choice consider especially with Jesper's plaid considering that she when she's like pretending or putting on an accent to like distance herself and make herself more of a character she really puts on like an accent from the Wandering Isles, which are very Celtic inspired. So I think the plaid really makes sense in that respect. I also really adore the structure that they gave all of her dresses, these beautiful bustles and her corseted silhouette really like gave the world like a grounding historical touch in a way that not a lot of the other costumes did for me personally, since um, like the military uniforms are so generic, like. It's kind of what all military historical pseudo fantasy uniforms look like but this kind of it grounded it in history but also like it had a very nina touch to it and like she could still move in them excellent not that you can't move in historical dresses just that you can't move in historical costumes sometimes nina's outfits are another s for me next is my best girl jenya love of my life queen of my heart they did her they did her so dirty this season. They took away all of her best lines. They sped through her relationship with Alina and her character development, and it just all was far too quick. They did her dirty, even though she was in more of the season. They didn't give her enough time if they wanted to have this arc for her character. The other thing they did was put her in whatever the fuck this is. It's very like traditional Russian grandma kind of vibes, which does not work for Genya, considering Genya at this point in the story when she's choosing to put this on her body, values her appearance so greatly, places that as like the center of her self-worth. And they, they put her in this and I don't get it. Like even if she's trying to be in disguise, she would dress herself. She would dress herself well. Um, I don't get it. I don't get what they were trying to do. I don't think she would ever put that in her body. I'd put it lower if I could but I guess a D is fine. I'm grouping the twins into one 
because their costumes are just so damn similar. I understand what they wanted to do here, unlike Jenya, but I think they took it a little too far with the matchy-matchy. Makes sense to have them coordinated because they're both on the same team, they're twins, they kind of work in tandem. But I think compared to the other privateers on the ship, who look much more like piratey, mismatched, kind of thrown together whatever you could find, these two stand out because they're so coordinated and they're so put together. Like the only real difference is that Tamar has sleeves the stripes are placed slightly differently. They're very, very similar. I wish they'd given a bit more flavor and separation between the characters since their personalities are so different and that really shines in the show, but I think the costumes do a disservice to that character. Overall, we can go with B because I'm not too mad about it because I'm being very nitpicky right now. Speaking of privateers, I think this put together look as opposed to the twins really works on Stormhold. He's the captain, he's super vain. He's putting on this air of superiority that really lends itself well to an outfit like this. And he's like super rich. He's one of the richest pirates ever. So he can totally afford this beautiful velvet coat and he can afford to get it ruined in whatever raids or <laughs> adventures they're going on. It adds to the whole character. And I, I this one I have no complaints um, besides the fact that he's not a redhead, but again, not super wowed if he was a redhead with like a broken nose i think that'd give him an s tier but for now a tier is where we're sticking it for nikolai his alter ego i wish we got to see nikolai in more of these princey outfits and less of the military outfit it's a very battle war heavy season so i get why he's in the military outfit but he specifically has this conversation with alina about how limiting being a prince is and how Stormhold can be more than that. And I think putting him in these more princey stereotypical outfits would really have helped to drive that point home. In this one specifically, I think the cut of the coat is a little strange. I think it's too long or maybe it needs more angles up front, but I think that actually helps instead of hurts. He looks really out of place in it almost. And I think that emphasizes how he's kind of playing the part of the prince. I'm sorry if you can hear my neighbors squeaking. Not sure if that was intentional or not, but I'll give them points regardless. This one will go into the A tier for me. The Darkling, I love what they did here. Ben Barnes talks about how his kefta was leather in one of his interviews, which I think is great. It's a stronger, more armor-like choice now that he's on this war path, and it's kind of like an upgrade from the silk or wool from the first season, and I love that they've transitioned the silver parts of the embroidery into gold to reflect Alina's embroidery, and it's kind of seeping in, illustrating that how she has like this grasp on him even though he does not want her to, and it displays like his obsession with her because I can, I'm just imagining him like forcing one of the Grisha and his army to like make this while they have so many other things to be doing, but like this is a priority for him. He needs to, everyone to know that Alina is a part of him now and it illustrates their connection and like fate and I don't know, I love it. S tier all the way. I'm sorry, Mel. I'm only gonna talk to you about you right now in relation to Alina. I really like this color coordination and honestly that's all i remember about mal's outfits sorry the teal and the rust colors that are present in both of them really pick up on each other and tie these two together through like fate and time as well mal's like rust color shirt with alina's sash and like the details in her embroidery and the dress his coat both of his coats, I guess he's wearing two in this picture, are this beautiful teal color. And they're not perfectly matchy-matchy, but they're really coordinated. And honestly, I think this is kind of more what they should have gone with for the twins. But regardless. Krobus, you're okay. You're fine, bud. The fact that it's two contrasting colors with the rust and the teal also really demonstrate how these two are very different, but they still work together very well. Also, Alina looks so good in this outfit. Watch out, Mel, because I'm gonna come steal your girl if you're not careful. I think for these ones, again, I love them. Not blown away, not wowed. So they get to go into the A tier. Once again, another excellent Alina look, my beautiful girl. I think her abandoning the teal colors and moving on to the red 
as she goes after the sea whip and kind of accepts this role of who she needs to be is a really interesting choice. Mal still has the red in his outfit, but it's covered up by his coat and it's he's overwhelmingly teal. And Alina has dropped that. And I think that's a really cool way to demonstrate her shifting priorities. Um, I think this was a really good transitional look when she's not moving between the two scenes and two settings. It's another A tier for me. I really, I think they're doing a really good job. Finally, our finale look from our lead girl, Alina. It's my least favorite. I get what they were going for with the combination of the first and second armies, with the uniform, but the sun summoner embroidery on the shoulder. But I don't think it works. She's in this getup for a really long time and it gets really boring. Um, I'm super disappointed that they didn't put her in a gold kefta for the end like she wears in the books. Actually, I don't think she wore a kefta except in like the flashback vision scenes. Keftas are the staple of this show. I think that was a really poor choice because she's their lead. And like a kefta is what, like the main costuming showpiece of the show. But anyways, part of her plotline this season is her taking on this role of the leader of the Grisha. And I think that her clothes don't really demonstrate that very well. I feel like they could have combined the keftas and the military uniforms in a different way because there's no kefta in here at all. I don't know, even if she was only in the kefta for the very end with her final fight with the Darkling, I think that would have had a lot more impact. I understand why they didn't because of how they rearranged the events of the show and how it, like it would be strange for her to put on something very opulent. But then again, keftas are bulletproof and like they could have had David make her something fancy. Like it would be very easy to get her into this gold kefta and yet they didn't and they left her in this military uniform. It's just really a letdown for me that Alina did not wear a kefta all season. So this one, this is unfortunately a C for me. I know, <laughs> okay. And that's all, this is our final ranking. I think the costumers did a really great job with the show and even though there were some that were kind of duds that I didn't love and other things that like I got what they were going for but didn't understand, I think most of the costumes I gave pretty high rankings. I think most of them were great. I really enjoyed season two. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. It was kind of a mess but I had such a good time. But I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on and on about these costumes and if you'd like to see more of this specific type of video from me please comment down below what you'd like me to rank and maybe I'll do it we'll see but other than that I hope you have a great rest of your day okay bye